thanks for stopping by. I'd like to let you know that in this video, the first part is going to be a beauty review. And if you are new to my channel, I am not a beauty vlogger or anything like that. I just happened to make a couple purchases and decided to dedicate this entire video to just reviewing kind of first impressions of some products that I bought. So the first half is the makeup second half is the knitting so if you want to skip ahead below is going to be a timestamp of when i actually get into the knitting portion if you'd like to watch that otherwise if you just stick around for a few more seconds you're going to get right into the uh, beauty portion of today's video all right so we're into the beauty portion of the video where i show you what i got with my monthly subscription service to ipsy for july as well as what i got at Shop Miss A, and I will link to um, to what the products I got at Shop Miss A if you're interested in picking them up yourself, and then just directly to the site if you have not shopped at the website before and are interested. Nothing that I'm including in this video is affiliated in any way, shape, or form. I just happened to find it and thought it was cool and want to share it with you guys. So. I'm going to be dabbing myself a little bit at this point because, and yelling, because my fan's on. It's really hot today. It's already almost 80 degrees and it's not even noon yet. And I'm going out to complete the other portion of the video where I'm going to hopefully find some good stuff at this yarn shop and come back and show you that with the Knit Picks purchases that I made from their sale on their tools and stuff. So, pardon the craziness. I'm sure you can relate to being uncomfortably hot without any AC in your bathroom, which, you know, first world problems. So, so getting into it, let's go over the Ipsy first because there's not much I'm going to be using today, and I'm not going to do like a crazy look because one, I'm kind of low key with my makeup, and then two, I am hot. So. I don't want anything that's going to be super melty, even though I'm not going to be outside for very long. But I just don't want to go through anything crazy if it's just going to come off my face. So um, this was the Ipsy bag for July. And inside it came with uh, this Color Club, which I'm wearing right now, um, Color Club Nail Lacquer. And it doesn't list the shade on the bottle, but mm, it doesn't list a color shade on the box either. But this is the box that it came in, in the Ipsy bag. I got this BRTC Vitalizer Sleeping Mask on one side and a Pore Tightening Sleeping Mask over here, so it's probably flip. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I got the eyeshadow Who Me by Colored Rain, so that's a cute little box. I am going to be using this today because I looked online to see what was coming to me for July, and this color is kind of similar to some I already have, but I haven't used this kind of color in a long time. So I'll probably be using that today. I'm wearing a neutral top and it's kind of like a neutral shade. So I'll incorporate that look. I got the Roller Lash by Benefit, um, a little sample. I will not be using this. I won't be using the Vitalizer mask either. And I got this OSQ hand cream um, or hand cure ultra moisturizing. I won't be using this either and um, a couple of reasons why I'm not using some of those are because I was either not able to verify that it was cruelty free or I already know it's not cruelty free so I'm putting these in my free for to the taking um, collection for work so the people at work can take advantage of that if they want to um, and then if you are here from the knitting portion of my video channel, then you'll know why um, I'm giving that away. And then the colored, uh, Color Club I was able to verify is a cruelty-free brand, so I actually already used that because the other, oh, cute, it kind of matches this bag. That's nice. Um, the, uh, what was I saying? Uh, the other color I had on was already chipping, so I just, Friday night, decided to change my mail phone. And it is Saturday, by the way. Saturday morning. 
Oh my god. Alright. So, color green. Actually, I'll put this back in the bag because I don't need it right now. And so if you hear me scream or you hear any meowing, it's because my kitties um, are freaking out because I'm talking to myself and they don't like it when I do that. And um, Koji, my boy, was already in here yowling at me and my girl is downstairs yowling, but they seem to be okay now. And I have my hair back because I'm going to be doing stuff on my face, obviously, and don't really want to mess up my hair getting product in it. So I have like a water bottle where I'm just going to spritz it after I take the clips down. So my thumbnail is probably going to be an after shot since I'm looking a little crazy at this point. So let's get into the Shop Miss A. Oh, I'm sure everything's all backwards. Maybe not. Um, ShopMissA.com. It's, uh, they even put on the side of their packaging that it's supporting education. Cruelty free, um, one dollar makeup and accessories, which is pretty much true. Feel good ingredients and supporting animals. And I actually got a couple things from the collections that are supporting education and supporting animals. Um, so let me get this open. So this is the first time I already know what I got, and I should have everything in here. But you guys will see me officially open up the bag and take a look at the products because I don't know how many of these I'm gonna be using today, but it'd be cool if we can. All right, so, oops. See, I took the label off so everything's sticking to me, so I'll just set that in the sink. <clears throat> in the sink, all right. Okay, all right, so it looks like I have everything. And okay, so my total for what I got, I had purchased one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine items. Subtotal was $15.93. And then shipping, I think, was like almost $4. And if you go to their site, I think if you spend either $25 or $35, you get free shipping. But I didn't really want to stock up on stuff yet because I'm like, well, let me get a few things that I know I want to try. And then if I really, really like them, then maybe next time I'll buy more. But for now, I didn't want to go crazy and then end up being disappointed, even though everything was relatively inexpensive, at least um, inexpensive, inexpensive to me. So, okay. So I'm taking everything out of this packaging. They, they wrapped it up pretty well. It has bubble wrap. It has like this tight, bubbly core foam stuff. And then looks like some things inside are also with that foam core stuff. So set that sink is droopy. It's the oldest sink in the world. Like, nothing in this home is new except for maybe the washer dryer downstairs. Uh, okay, okay, that's everything. I'll put that up. So, first thing on the list is the AOA Studio Wonder Blender, and it is the Paw Paw Edition. So, this was a little bit more than a dollar. I think it's like a dollar fifty-five or a dollar eighty-five, but part of the um, cost goes to help the animals in need. So I'm thinking that's animal shelters, animal rescues. Um, so that's nice. And yep, oh yeah, okay. So it is $1.55 because on the back, it tells you a little bit about the product and it says, remember 55 cents of each Paw Paw product sold helps support animals in need. Visit shopmissa.com to learn more about our charity. Thank you for your support. Or says thanks for your support. All right, so it it's pretty much the same as any kind of beauty um, sponge or blending sponge, where you have to submerge it in water first so that it expands to its full size. And I will be doing that shortly. But let's go over the other things I got before we start using them. I got another Wonder Blender, and this is for the A Plus A Plus Edition, and it's Mochi Soft. And it is like um, a microfiber blending sponge. And I, I want to keep calling it something like you, you call something a Q-tip, you call something a Band-Aid, you call something Kleenex, you call these, and you probably know what I'm going to say. But that is a product name or a brand name, not necessarily the product itself. So, Wonder Blender. And it has a microfiber feel to it, and it's $1.88. Oh yeah, cool. I just realized it tells you uh, how much it costs right there. So $1.55, $1.88, 88 cents goes to help um, people 
uh, right? No, okay, so here's the back. It says, we believe every child deserves a bright future. A portion of proceeds from A-plus edition products will go to local and international charities that support children's education. From school supplies to building schools. Thank you for your support. So yes, I am all for that. Um, and the fact that it's like a microfiber reminds me of this other brand that I've seen advertised. And I actually sign up to their newsletter, so I'm always getting product emails. But their um, microfiber blender is, I think, $6. This is $1.88. And that's still, $6 is super cheap. $1.88 is even cheaper. So I feel like if it ends up not working out, I didn't really spend an arm and a leg on it. So no harm, no foul. Alright, now let's get into, okay, I had a couple more uh, accessory or tool-like things that I bought. This was a um, high-def brush duo. Oh, okay, so you can see a little bit of a quality issue. I don't know if you can see. Let me see. Uh, right here. Sorry, camera. Um, right here, it's like uh, double stamped, so it's a little bit weird. That's just like a cosmetic defect, not necessarily, necessar uh, not necessarily uh, a big deal as far as application goes. But let me see. All right, so this was like an angled brush. I thought this would be good for like doing powder under my eyes. I had already been doing that with like this fluffy brush that I have, and it's fine, but this one's like, ooh, I still had some product on it. Um, this one's definitely, this one is softer than this one, so I think I'll use that one today. And plus the other one has stuff on it. I think it's powder. I don't think I used it to blend any eyeshadows out recently. And then I, ooh, oh cool, it comes like this funny little net thing right here. Am I supposed to pull it off this one? Maybe. I don't know, I think I'm going to throw that out. I don't know what to use it for. Uh, so yeah, so we have like this um, angled kabuki blush, uh, brush, which I think would be good for doing like my powders and stuff as well. I usually use um, this one that I got from BH Cosmetics, and this was a um, Real Techniques brush that I got from Ulta ages ago. This one's definitely softer than this one. I don't know if it's age or if it's quality. I use this one more because it's just my oldest one, but um, I like this one better and I might retire this, we'll see. But they're very big. I don't use bronzers, I don't use blushes, so these are usually just when I'm applying my setting powder or um, my powder foundation, if I decide to use those. So I will probably use this one today, see how that goes. I'm running out of room in my little, my little pin. Um, and yes, probably use this one too. I need to reorganize these brush um, containers all right, I think that is, oh, okay, one more thing. I got the, the, the AOA is like their brand, by the way, so I got the AOA Studio Brush uh, Cleaner. So it's a color switch, essentially. Um, I'm not doing like a crazy eye look, but if I were, or if I probably wanted to wash off that um, one with the, the product coming off of it, I could use this and just swish it around and it'll get like a lot of the product off and then after a while, you can probably, yep, to clean and reuse the sponge, add soap, run it under water, squeeze out, and lay out, lay out to dry. So this can be reused and reused and reused, and it's a dollar. This one is a dollar. The brush set was $2. Um, and of course, the Wonder Blender was $1.88 or $1.55, depending on which one you bought that supports which cause. What else do I have? Okay, put all the put all the junk in um, a bag over here so I'm not making it more of a mess. And my sink is still leaking. I swear I turned them as tight as I could, but that's okay. Everything's around up. Alright, so makeup. Now let's get into what I actually got that I can use on my face. Okay. It's it's wrapped up in this like foamy thing, so let me cut that off. Ah, yep, and it has the official cruelty-free. There's several um, cruelty-free kind of logos, but logo glows. Oh my god! Um, but this one's the bunny with the ears, and not like the leaping bunny one. So um, this is the AOA Perfect 
finishing pressed powder looks I don't know if it's a neutral -y or like more of a red, but maybe when I blend it out it'll be fine. I'm, I tend to run like golden neutral, I think, um, except for like my chin area, my upper, my upper lip and my chin area. You might be able to see it's a little bit darker. One, I have a mustache and I don't wax it. Whatever. I just don't. Um, but this area in general is usually a little bit darker than the rest of my face. and. Um, sometimes I have to use, most of the time I try to use color corrector, uh, just to make sure I don't look gray right here, but sometimes I forget. Well, I never forget. Sometimes I'm just lazy and I don't do it, but I know that it will help kind of, um, uniform my face if I do that. So I can tell for sure when I don't, but maybe this will work. It's actually just a finishing powder, so it's kind of just going to smooth over everything versus a setting powder. But considering how hot it is and how melty I get, I don't know if I want all of that stuff like separating and leaking through even anyway, because even if I set my face, depending on how long I'm outside, even if I'm just sitting here stationary, sometimes things happen. And let me just see what we're doing on time. Okay, cool. We're about 15 minutes in, minus whatever I edit before I got to in front of the camera. So it will not cut me out anytime soon. Alright, so now we're getting into some more of the products I purchased. Alright, alright. <laughs> I did get a setting powder. The shipping wasn't too long, but longer than like if you got something at Sephora or Ulta. Um, so, not bad. I mean, considering, <clears throat> considering what I paid for everything, I'm not too bummed about the timing. Um, but, okay. So, in here, I think this is the highlighter. I got. Oh, wow. Okay, it's smaller than I thought, and it, oh, it came a little bit open. Ooh, oh, okay, it kind of crumbly. Ah, uh -huh. all right. It's a dollar. No, 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 no. This was not a dollar. This was more because it's um. This is in the Paw Paw collection, so I think this is a dollar fifty-five, and it came unscrewed. Sarah, there's that. Ooh. Okay, yeah, it's pretty much kind of like gloop, gump, clumpy and dry in there. I was thinking it would be more liquidy. I can kind of see the thing swirling around in here. So this probably won't be worth using the, oh, yeah, it's making a mess. It might not be worth using the applicator because this like isn't screwing on very well, but it didn't leak out when it came, it was just unscrewed and now it's kind of dry. So shop at your own risk, but if you're into cheap, ooh, it's pretty. What's on my hand is like a nice little shimmer, but it's supposed to be on my face and not anywhere else, so we'll see. It might melt off anyway later today, we'll see. I'm doing a half sort of kind of uh, wear test, so if you click ahead, to where I'm doing the haul from what I got at the yarn shop and what I got at Knit Picks, you'll see what I look like at that point. I usually don't touch up my makeup, so what it is is what it is. I'm not going to put any lip product on right now because it's. I'm going to have a late breakfast before I go out, and then I'm going to eat some more because why not? <laughs> and then um, I'll have lipstick on at that point, and we'll, that's just the lip product I always wear anyway, so nothing fancy there. But as far as like face products, that I bought and how they are wearing will be will be later on in the video. So there, as I mentioned in the intro, there's a timestamp for this part. There's a timestamp for when I get to the knitting. I guess no, there's no timestamp for this because this is the first part. There's a timestamp for when I'm throwing the knitting stuff. So if you click then, where I talked about it in the intro, you'll see what I look like. Plus, you'll be watching the intro, so you'll see what I look like after anyway. So, whatever. I guess it goes either way. If you're watching the first part, then you already know what I look like after wearing this, so. But if you're watching this, I don't know what I'm talking about. Never mind. Carry on. <laughs> the heat is getting to me, guys. Alright, so. Ah, oh my gosh. Okay. I just painted my nails, so I always hate it when I get, like, these wrappers that have, like, that perforated um, line that you have to rip up, so we'll try it. It already chips? Okay. 
Alright, so this nail polish is not the greatest, let's say that. I did two coats, I just did this and it lifted already a little bit. It's not super bad, but I don't know if it's worth applying. Again, to the middle finger of my left hand, so let me just use my scissors, which I probably should have done in the first place. Alright, so got that a little bit. So this is a skinny mascara. And I bought this because it said it was good for, um, also a dollar, said this was good for doing, like, baby lashes. Oh! I, I was thinking this was the part where the product is, but it's not. Alright. Okay. So here we go. Whoop! Just like that. So this will be good for, like, the lower lash line, getting in those little corners. I almost always like bump my face with my makeup, um, with my mascara wand when I'm doing like my lower lash line or like in the inner corner and I'm being very careful and like even using it like this to try to like not jab it or like go like this and like bump my nose or something. Almost never works out that way for me. So I'm hoping, even if I don't like this product necessarily, it's only a dollar, I still have a cute dollar wand that I can just wipe off and use with one of the other mascaras that I actually like. So we'll see. Definitely trying that out. Um, what else did I get? Aha! Oh. Stuff, stuff's already leaking on me. Alright, so I got this AOA Studio, that's again their, their brand, um, Go Brow. Now I currently, I don't do a lot with my brows, but I use the Glossier boy brow and it is just boy boy brow black and it's like this kind of wand eh, not not too nothing crazy just like a little baby mascara wand it's basically eyebrow mascara and I like it it gives me a little more definition I don't thread I don't microblade I don't tweeze I just leave my eyebrows like this you can see I'm missing some hair here I don't care I bumped my head when I was a kid on a giant TV that had like this wooden case thing on it. Like when they came in wood, it was not an entertainment center, it was just the whole TV. I bumped my head when I, long story, anyway, I don't have hair right there anymore. And it's been since I was like five or six. I mean, it's been a long time, so it just never grew back, didn't really worry me, didn't bother me. Nobody's even said anything about it or any of the other weird things. I'm like, oh, any of the other weird things on my face. I just let it live and I like a little bit of definition on my eyebrows since I found out that I could do that and without spending a lot of time with like um, an eyebrow pencil or gel or anything like that I found that the boy brow was just what I needed very simple so I use my scissors again and open this guy up because it has like that perforated thing you got to peel off so let's see what it looks like The reveal. Ooh. A lot of product here, but okay, now not so much. Has a stopper. Okay, so if you swirl the brush around, that's when you get that weird thing on the bottom. But oh. we'll find out. We'll find out how that how that works. And the last product from the Shop Miss A is the AOA Studio Perfect Setting Powder and I got the shade Warm because I am pretty sure I'm a warm, not a cool, but I'm like warm neutral. So we'll see. Oh, another, this one has like that plastic uh, shrink wrap stuff around it again, so I have that perforated edge, I got it rip off. Okay. All right, so it has it has a sticker to cover up the sifter thing, and it doesn't have a pull tab, so I'm probably going to struggle with that, but we'll see. And it does look, just based on what's popping out of the little holes, it looks like, I don't know if you guys can see, 
it still looks a little bit more red than my skin tone, even though I'm holding this up to my hand. My hand and my face aren't that different, so this is definitely like a more of a red. So we'll see if like a thin coat is fine. I might need to mix it with like my uh, banana powder that I have as a setting powder. I have a couple. I have a ColourPop one and I have um, this other one that I got in a, another Ipsy subscription that I actually like better than the ColourPop, but they both kind of leave me a little bit ashy. It's just the banana powder thing. I tried one. Um, I tried the Makeup Revolution one and um, it also did that. <laughs> Revolution Beauty, I guess is what they're called now. Makeup Revolution Revolution. I don't know. But theirs was like super, super cast, and then I got rid of it. And then I got the ColourPop one, and also kind of cast. And then I mixed it with like a darker one, and then the darker one was too dark. So long story short, I might have to do a little mixing with this. All right, so I'm gonna stop for a moment, clean up my mess, and then we'll get into actually applying these things to my face. All right, we're back, and I have wet my, I'm gonna do the mochi sponge, and, oops, Thought I squeezed out all the water. Okay, now I have. <laughs> Alright, so here's this mochi sponge when it is wet. And I still haven't taken it out of the wrapper, but here is the um, the Wonder Blender that's from the Pawpaw. Alright, so the Pawpaw Edition one, and this is the A Plus Education one. You can see it kind of got bigger, a lot bigger. So you know, good size flat for our eight here, I guess we're like doing like that. I don't know, I don't really care much about like which angle side I use, but it's there if you know what to do with it, great. Maybe like this, I don't know. I don't do any contour, I don't do bronze or blush. I'll just slap something on my face. All right, so first things first, I always start with um, my foundation. Every now and then I do my eyes first and I'm kind of leaning that way because of the, I took the colored rain one out of the packaging. It looks like this. It's like a nice little shimmer and it's called Who Me. And it's a pretty color. I Now that I'm looking at it more closely, I think I already have something like this, but I have those palettes with me as I thought I might use uh, a little bit of that. So maybe we'll do the eyes first just in case there's any fallout. Um, and then I can do the face after. So let me look at my, this is the brown sugar palette I have by ColourPop. It was Carucci and ColourPop collaboration. I haven't taken the protective film off of the um, mirror yet because I, I just use my bathroom mirror. And okay, so these are, these are some of the colors. All right. And then I'm thinking this one kind of yeah, it kind of looks like this one, maybe like a blend between um, ginger and auburn, which I have both. I've used both of those separately. This one, I don't know, kind of, maybe if they had a baby, this would be that color, but I'm not mad. It was kind of sort of, well, it wasn't really free, because considering the amount of things I can't use in that Ipsy uh, because of the cruelty freeness or lack of cruelty freeness, uh, this um, eyeshadow and the nail polish may be about 10 bucks. I don't know. But I may or may not have gotten $10 worth of product this time because I just personally will not use the other ones. But, um, no mad. It's a cute color and it's travel size. You know, I don't have a lot of single shadows anymore. Uh, because they were old and I got rid of them, or I was young and I bought them and they were like wacky colors I just don't see myself wearing anymore, so they have since um, met their grave. Alright, and what's the other palette I have? Okay, I have the BH Cosmetics Glam Reflection Palette in Rosé. It's a 15 color shadow palette. And I it didn't come with a mirror sticker, so I do have the big mirror here. And it does have a little slip that I keep. Even though I don't really use the mirror that much. I maybe used it once or twice because I was just in another room that didn't have a mirror. And, okay, so this is what the palette looks like. And you can see um, there aren't too many shimmers. There are one, two, three, four, five shimmers. So the rest are matte. 
And um, nothing really looks like maybe, maybe well, no, because this is like more, this is like actually like a rosy color, like a dusty light rose, and this is kind of like a brownie, purpley color, but my lining's horrible, so you might not be able to tell, but it's not quite close to either of these, so that's fine. I might, mm, I don't know, I don't know, I was thinking like, maybe, maybe this matte, even though it's really light for me, and this. Uh, underneath it. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but I have to pick something now because it is going to be what I'm doing first. So let's just go in with the brown sugar one. Yeah, okay. I think I have a better match. Uh, Jamocha, which is this one, and that together. And it's not, it doesn't quite match my shirt, but it's neutral. And that's what I'm looking for, just a simple look today, and I lost, oh, I had to put my protector back in the eyeshadow palette. I don't really know which side it goes on, but, like, which side was touching the shadows and which one was touching the mirror, but that's okay. Alright, so, now we begin. Now, I may, depending on how long this takes, I might just, like, jump to the next part. We'll see. I'll have to watch the whole thing through to decide, so I might just like pause between so that I have a good cut, but we'll see. So first, I'm going to uh, put my base on, my primer, it's the NYX eyeshadow base, just like that, it's the skin tone color, it's a little light for me, but once I actually put product on my eyebrow, um, eyelid, it doesn't matter. So I usually just go in with my ring finger and dab it on like so. Starting at the middle, kind of working my way around. And depending on how far up I go, because you can see I have a hooded eye, I kind of like concentrate it on that part where it folds over a little bit. But today I'm like, I want to be cute, but not that cute because it's hot and I know it's going to look gross after a while, so I don't know. Maybe I'm putting too much thought into it. And then I just kind of like, I don't really like pat it up because I don't do anything to my eyebrows, so I think it'd look a little more obvious that they're kind of janky, but honestly, I don't really care that much. And I think I might have already mentioned, but I'm trying to talk as loud as I can because my fans in here is my window does not do very well at getting a breeze and there's like... There's no breeze. I'm looking at the tree outside and the leaves aren't moving at all, so that's that. Alright, so now I have my little towel in the sink. Wipe off my paint, my ring finger. Alright, so I think I'll use this brush. I actually got this in the last Ipsy subscription and it has some product on it, so I'm just gonna... I'm not using the color switch today just because, I don't know, I didn't think I was going to use that many colors, so I wasn't like planning on it. So. I'm just wiping as much of that old product off as I can. So it's kind of like, it's a fluffy-ish brush, but it's not like super, super fluffy. It's soft, which I like, of course. Who don't want to scratch the brush on your face? So I'm gonna go into that brown sugar palette. And this really isn't even more about my look because I'm not, I'm not like that, you know? Um, I'm a, not a makeup guru. So I just tap it in here like that, and then, like everybody else, as I know this one does have a little bit of fallout, I'm just going to pat it on my lid. And I'm not doing, oh, I didn't tap it that time, but honestly, this is a, like a really light color, so it's, this one's not so bad. It's like um, henna and chalk, chalk that, and maybe sometimes sorrel that give me some issues. But other than that, like, for this being my only ColourPop palette, I like it. I was eyeing, I have some other stuff from them, but as far as, like, eyes, I have a Super Shock Shadow. Ooh. Uh, but that one's more glittery. This one, this one's more of a shimmer that I just got. I was thinking they might look a bit the same, but they're totally different finishes, so it's not as big of a deal. So, 
I have a hooded eye. I'm not like super concerned and I'm pretty sloppy with my makeup, but I'm like, who's going to tell me besides you guys? <laughs> but nobody I know in person ever says anything, so that's fine with me. But because this is like really close to my skin tone, like I like a deeper, like a medium tan kind of shade. It's just kind of there, kind of in the background. And you can see my eyes already creasing just from the primer because of the hoodedness. And I generally have like oily eyelids anyway, so this is just what it is. So I'm just patting it in like I did on the other side. I usually do them both. Like some people do one eye and then do the other the same after but I think that's a little risky if I forget what I'm doing so I just try to do it one and then the other one and then the other but let me know in the comments do you do one eye and then the other eye or do you um do you do them like I do where you alternate what step you're doing on both eyes and okay so So it's pretty, it's just on my eye. It's not like doing anything crazy. Yeah, you can like, like barely even tell it's there, but it's just a nice little base for that glitter. All right, so I'm gonna now go into the color green. And that's pretty much gonna be it. I might do, I don't really feel like eyeliner today. So I might just leave it like this and then do my mascara. So it's open now. So I'm going to take that same brush, just tap it on. Tap it on my lid, just the lid part, not past this like creasy area because um, that's when it's going to get weird. Even though I have a hooded eye, you're not going to see much of it until I close my eye. I know that. I don't care. <laughs> so this is just how I do it. All right, so it's simple. See, no fuss, no craziness, and there's not a lot of fault. Some of that's just me glistening because I have this SPF skincare on and it's hot and they're mixing together. And I didn't prime my face because I'm not gonna be outside that long. And plus I don't usually wear primer unless I'm gonna be outside very long I'm like going out out and I'm just running in there and getting some lunch coming back home and filming the second half of the video so yeah that's nice it's cute I like it that's what matters I like it so done all right so we have like a cute eye look Ooh, I'm leaking well I'm I'm glistening, I'm glistening, and it's not because I have highlighter on. All right, so I'm gonna do the face part and then I'll do mascara, I guess, because I don't wanna bump the mascara with the foundation one and all that stuff. All right, so I think like my scream is because something fell because I don't have a counter in here. They're just hanging out on the rim of the sink, which is dangerous. So I think for foundation, even though it's like dewy, kind of like skin-like, I'm going to use the Amented Cosmetics uh, Stick Foundation in shade T10. It's like a golden, and I don't conceal, so I don't try to do too much under my eye because then, it, as you can see, I have fine lines down here, so it's just going to settle, and I don't want to deal with that. So I just kind of put a few, I'm going to color correct my chin so you can see it's definitely like reddish down here compared to the golden of this foundation. But when I stick it over here, this kind of looks okay. Like, I'm red because I'm hot, but you can see like this is golden. This is kind of golden. My nose is a little red, but whoa, let me wipe my forehead off real quick. Boop. So it like pretty much blends into my forehead too. So I'll just do a little more. And 
so I know it's gonna happen, but like right on my nose, like where my glass, I usually wear glasses out because I am nearsighted, but I'll probably have sunglasses on today, but right here, it usually, because I sweat here, it kind of just separates there no matter what, even if I set it with powder. So, now yeah, we're going to try the paw paw, or no, no, that's not the paw paw. This is the A plus education wonder blender that has like this micro fleece. I can't really tell, but it's cute. And I'm just going to dab, 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 dab. And actually, I like, I do color, um, I do conceal, but I actually don't conceal, like, under my eyes. I have some hyperpigmentation over here, because when I get breakouts, and you can see it on my chin, too, and a little bit, like, right here, that if I get breakouts, and, um, the pimple goes away, then I magically get, like, these dark scars. Even if I don't mess with it, they just kind of do that. And if I've had that my whole life, um... So, I will go in with my concealer just to kind of block it out. Even though it's not going to match, it's going to cover it up a little bit. So, And I'm actually using that flat side, but it's not like I did it on purpose. It's just, it's just there. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not looking super covered. This is like a medium coverage that's buildable, they say. And you can already see that, like, my chin area is looking gray, but I'm going to, um, color correct that. I think, I can't remember the price of this, but, uh, they have, obviously, lighter shades, but Mented is designed for women of color who have struggled, at least they started out with lipsticks, and I have all their neutral shades but I don't have the reds yet because I already have a lot of reds so I figured I'd use up at least one red before I buy any more red lipsticks. Um, but here we are blending, blending. I don't blend down on my neck but I do blend like under my chin area just so it doesn't just chop off. It kind of goes around a little bit and I have a double chin so it kind of looks like I'm blending it down my neck because my chin is my neck but yeah. You get what you get, and I'm fine with it. Um, okay. Yeah. It's nice because I actually dip this in cold water, so it feels kind of cool. But the fan blowing on it after I've like had it on my face, it's a little bit of relief from the craziness. So even if I'm like already blended, it's just nice to kind of like dab it on my head, on my face. Um, I'm gonna do my corner right here. Okay. It's not even like I really need it, but I do like to kind of just even everything out. Um, Alright, so I've set that down. Now that I put that part on, I'm going to go in with my concealer to do what I was talking about. So I use the, this is my favorite, I wish that they had the foundation in the exact same shade for me. But this is the Hourglass um, Hidden Concealer, I want to say, but it's in the shade Almond, and it's, uh, I think, a, like a neutral is what it's described as, but like, look at that, like, boop, right there, it's like, uh, what, what hyperpigmentation, what random pimple things that just like, do their crazy thing and then leave you looking like, you know, there was a war zone on your face, like, huh, crazy. And, like, if I didn't have the foundation on, it would still be a little bit, um, too golden-y looking for me, like a, dip, a bit darker, but blending it out, it looks so nice, so, and it's expensive. This is $34, and I almost always use it as a foundation if I don't feel like putting on, like, a full face of foundation. And I just put a little bit on my nose, because I know it's going to separate right here. And then I like to just cover up a little bit more of those dark spots on my forehead. And sometimes I'll bring it up. So you can kind of see right here where it looks a little bit too dark on my um, temple area. 
That's what I'm talking about. But if you blend it out, then it looks fine. And I'll put that back in there. Alright, so now I'm just going to kind of seam it all together. Just a little dab. Let's kind of um, take away those edges that I made. And I'm going to break to see where we are on time. Can't see. Okay, I have the clamp on the tripod blocking, but should be alright. Um, so yeah, I just kind of do that a little bit. Nothing fancy. Just kind of moving things around on the face. Kind of avoiding that um, under eye area for the most part because I don't like everything settling in there. And you can think of concealer to fix that, but even when I use that concealer, it still settles into my lines, even if I do like a powder right after. So I just leave it be. I just kind of like blend up to it. And it's fine. Okay. Alright. And then most of the time I have my hair clipped back now, but it's going to um, cover this side of my face anyway. So that's kind of like helps also conceal, but if the wind's blowing, it's going to blink, whoop, I'm going to get clogged right here if this is not um, covered like everything else. Alright, so the next thing is to color correct um, my chin and beard, mustache and beard area because it's looking a little gray. And I usually just use um, my uh, LA Girl Pro Concealer and Orange because if you're darker complexion, orange is good for you. And I, oop, that's a bit much. But, um, I should be able to blend it out. Now for today, I think I'm just going to do my finger, kind of like work it in a little bit, kind of like blend it, mix it. It's going to be a little orange, but I'm going to go back in with, um, my foundation because it's looking crazy but it's better I think to do it like this so then even if you already have your foundation on you don't have to go so hard with your concealer because you already kind of have your base and you know what's already covered And if I had better lighting, it would probably look like, I don't know, but I'm like, if I'm going to be in white, that's not cool, and kind of yellowy, then I should do some makeup in the same light, because then I know what it's going to look like in that light. And I'm not going to be like outside, outside, like at an event or anything, like a barbecue, like I was a couple weekends ago, so. Alright, and then sometimes I step back. And I can kind of see where the orange is right here, and on my chin. But if I didn't use as much, it probably wouldn't be as bad, and I might not have to go back in. But because I didn't, I used too much, I'm going to go in. But see, like right now, I don't, at least I don't see like that gray that I had earlier. Of course it's orange, but it's not gray. <laughs> So I'm going to go back in with my Mented uh, foundation and I'm going to wipe off my finger because I'm going to just dab it. I don't want to mix it like with everything else. So I'm just going to rub my finger right here and just tap it in on top so I'm not like disturbing what's underneath. And even though I'm kind of mixing it with that first layer of foundation on the on the stick, it's like, oh my god, look look at how different that is now. I'm just like blending that line out, nice and easy, just on the edge right here. I'm bringing it in. 
I don't know. There's like honestly almost no rhyme or reason. I'm just talking it out and now it's like, hmm. So I do do stuff and stuff, okay. But I mean, you kind of have to sometimes. All right. Mm. Let's get the chin area real quick, like underneath part. All right. Yeah, all right. So it's not looking bad now. And everything looks pretty, pretty seamless um, as far as where the beard part and the non-beard part and the stark part. It's still, you can kind of see it a little bit, but it's not as bad anymore. And I like that. This is what I like. All right, so I'm hot. I'm gonna take a moment to stop the video again. I'm going to spray some setting spray, let that relieve me from some of this heat, and then we'll go into the face powder and the mascara. All right, we're back. I did my setting spray. I actually used the All Star setting spray by ColourPop, and it just says face setting spray. I'm not sure what the finish is. It's almost gone now, but I have um, I have the Urban Decay All Nighter, and I have um, this dewy one by uh, it's like Crystal something by Pacifica, and so that's like my next. The All Nighter is actually older than the ColourPop one, but it's expensive, and I kind of just want to switch them up every now and then, see how they go. I actually don't think there was a setting spray at Shop Miss A. I almost want to say I would have bought it if it was like a dollar, but I don't know how well it would perform. Okay, so before I do my brows and my mascara and my highlighter, I almost forgot about that one, I'm going to do the setting powder, and I forgot to take the little thing off. I'm not going to mix it with anything because then I don't know how it's going to perform on its own. I'm going to tap some in here. Okay, yep, it's definitely reddish, reddish looking. Um, and then, okay, so I'll use this new brush, give it a dab, just kind of swirl in the pan here, or the lid. Let's just go in. Oh, actually. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, I can see it on the side here. It's like, ooh, like a little bit. And I think I was going to use it, uh, the other one under my eye, but. Hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit red. Let's just add some more. Okay, so let's do the other side so they're even. And I have the fan on, so it's like blowing the stuff out everywhere. And I really didn't have to set my under eye because I didn't have much there, but cool. Hmm, okay. Nah, I probably just messed this up. <laughs> But I definitely need to get like my nose because that's important because that's where my glasses are going to be. And actually this brush going like this is kind of scratchy to me, but like this is fine. I'm not doing it hard, but this feels good. Okay, I didn't want to move my, my foundation around, but I did want to set it just so it kind of melds together with the correctors and all that. So. Let me go in with like a lighter hand just right here. Cause I just wanna like, I don't want it to be like cakey. I just don't want it to fall off my face either. Uh, I don't know, something about, I just get really hot in general. It doesn't even have to be summer. My body is just weird. Like I'm always way too hot, way too cold. And um, summer's the worst because I just get hot really fast. I'm like more of a 65, 70 person. Like that's a good day. And that just might be because I was like raised in the Pacific Northwest. So I'm kind of used to like a milder temperature. Though now it seems like lately the years have been getting hotter and hotter. 
feel I might not even say be able to say that much longer because over there it'll be as hot as it is here like my parents had to get an AC uh, I think the last time I was home they had an AC and we never had AC and I was super surprised they got some window units okay so nothing fancy I'm not trying to go in heavy I just want the powder to kind of absorb out absorb some of that moisture because I was using like more of like a dewy kind of a natural looking foundation and any other day I'd like it but if I'm going to be in the heat I probably should have used a matte but I really didn't want like that cakey look matte Disney so kind of had to do a little mixture here of a dewy skin and a setting powder to make sure I don't look too dewy like on purpose I want to look dewy not by unnatural causes so all right Ooh. I don't know if it's a brush or is it a cat hair it looks like a brush because my cat is very oh dear come on out Oh, are you going to do it? Come on. Alright. Oh, it was a cat. <laughs> okay. With the fan on, it's just blowing everything everywhere, so that kind of happens. Like, yesterday, I could not go to bed because something was in my eye, and I swear it was a cat hair. And I just wouldn't go away. So I'm doing my chin just a little more. Kind of bringing that to the jaw. I'm just tapping everything one more time just to make sure it's like in there. Even though this brush is kind of poking me. Maybe I'm pushing too hard. Okay. It's not it's not horrible now. It is definitely redder than I would have liked. But I think the next shade up is way too light. I had to check again, but from the web images, there wasn't like any like swatch thing so I could see. But you know, kind of looking at my chest compared to my face, it's okay. But it's definitely not my color. But I did try to be as light as I could with still making sure it was effective. So with that out of the way, let me use the pressed finishing powder and see if that helps kind of melt mm, everything together. Just check out the time here. Okay, so a nice little, maybe it's not as bad. Oh. Let's see. Okay, that was definitely just a fiber. Mm. Some of these are my hairs, so. <laughs> well, now I feel like I'm looking too cakey, but this is just what makeup looks like, so it's honestly not that bad for it all, you know? But this is just a first impression, this is just first application. This is just a really hot day. There are a lot of factors here that may not be doing this product justice. Right, get up in that hairline a little bit. Okay, I think the brush is shredding, honestly. I should have washed it first. But... Okay. I'm really focusing on my nose and like this part because that's where I sweat. I'm sure my glasses are gonna be hanging out, so yeah. Okay. Now, I'm not sure what you guys are reading on camera, but in person, from like this distance I'm standing, sinks 
width away from the mirror, it looks fine. I'm not like a flawless beat person, so this is kind of like my norm anyway, but I'm just glad it's not giving me uh, separation upon first application. And oh, and I didn't even put my bib on. I usually like wrap um, a towel or something or an old shirt around my neck so that if there's any powder from my face uh, that drips down, it doesn't like mess up my outfit. And I usually try to put my shirt on first so that I don't mess it up when I put it on later. And okay, okay, close up. It's actually sticking kind of weird around my nose. But, mm, mm. all these weird fibers. Don't know if that's the fan pushing it around or if it's because I just didn't wash the brush off. All right, so I'm gonna do setting spray one more time. Then I'm gonna do highlight and brows and mascara. So we'll be right back. I'm back and I am still sweaty. And I looked at my nose a little closer, so I'm using this one, and I'm kind of just like blending out those weird patchy bits. I don't know what is the reason why it's doing that. It could be, ooh, it's doing it down here too a little bit. Oh, I'm actually just wiping it off at this point. <laughs> okay, so that's probably my fault, but I don't know about this, like why it was doing that before I even started trying to adjust it with that brush. It could be the product, it could be the fact that I'm really warm and melty and oils and everything are coming out because I did not use a primer. Um, I might try to touch up just a little bit before I go out with um, some foundation right here. Let's just try right now and see if, if that helps. If it doesn't, if anyone says anything crazy to me, that's that's fine. I'll take I'll take my lump. I'll take my lumps. Mmm, yeah, it's not. Plus I had powder on and stuff, so it's I'm making it worse. <laughs> I'm making it worse, but hmm. Maybe it's a tie. Alright, I might have to do a little bit of Dr. Jekyll Mr. Hyde right here to get rid of that weird patch. But in the meantime, I'm just going to keep moving on because it's just right here that I'm worried about. Everything else is fine. Eyeshadow is a little bit creasy, but again, I have oily eyelids. And I tried to make sure that I did extra primer in that part, so I think it's just kind of part of being a hooded eye person. But the fact that it hasn't even been an hour, well, it kind of has. It's almost noon now. Uh, and when I started filming, I think it was like 10-ish, but I kept stopping to do stuff, so that might be some of the factors. So, I already did my setting spray, pushed it in with this blending sponge, and now I'm going to do my mascara. Oh, i got to remember to open it from this side. I'm going to use the baby wand to do my lower. So that everybody goes like this, right? Oh, got a little bit of extra product right there. Give it real close. I'm like barely It's not super prominent, but that's okay. That's what I like. But it does take some work. I'm sorry if my hair is getting in your way. Okay. 
okay, it's from this distance, I can see ooh, that I'm sweating still and it's coming right on through, through the powder. But that's okay, I'm in a hot area. I'm gonna try to cool off in a little bit. So let me do the middle, or let me do the inner corner with this one and then switch to the uh, mascara that I'll use for the rest of my upper lash. I think because the brush is so little, it's like really hard to like grab any of the lashes. I mean, it's touching them, but it's not like pulling anything through. think it's as effective as I was thinking it would be but in that case we'll move on I'm going to use the Urban Decay Perversion Bigger Blacker Batter Lash and, oh somebody's home so I'm using the Urban Decay Mascara and I'm going to just apply this to my upper lash as all people who do lashes mascara know you kind of tilt your head back Slack jaw. I don't know why. Ooh. Being careful not to bump my lid. Okay. So you could definitely see the lower lash versus the top lash is way more defined. Or the top lash is way more defined than the lower lash. But that's what I like. So lashes are done. I'm still very hot. Let me just dab myself a little bit. Even though that messed me up. I don't know what part of that is going on, but it's hot. It's hot. Okay. So I've got most of that done. Alright, so the next step is to do my brows and then I can do the highlighter. And then that'll be pretty much it. So I pull this out and I get like all this product on the end, so I'm just going to like get some of it off. I think that's a cat hair, take that off. So I'm going to try it like I usually do with my brow, my, my, my boy brow. I'm just going to start combing it through, see if it picks up any, ooh, okay. I also just did a dark brown shade. I didn't go with black. Wow. Okay. This is actually working better than the boy brow. Mm. So, la uh, brow with the Shop Miss, the AOA Studio Go Brow. Nothing. So, we'll do that on the other side. And I just comb it through. I don't brush my brow. I use a spoolie for that that's attached to the product. And I just comb till the end of the, what I think is the end of the brow. Okay, now I look a little weird. <laughs> um, like, my eyebrows are like super, ooh, and I'm leaking, I'm crying. See that screen there? It's like, dump my stuff. All right. So that's done, that's done. So the last step is 
is this funky dried out highlighter. And since the dropper is like basically useless, um, I'm just going to go like this. Well, let's do one side first. Okay, eh, I think I'll go like this. Just dab it on my finger directly. Mm. It's not crazy. don't use highlighter like that so I like a little bit of subtlety and I don't know if it's subtle because the um, thing is dried out or if it just like is and I know I'm not putting it in the right spot but mm -hmm. I guess put some on my funky nose because it's all weird it's kind of cute I'd rather try this on a day that's not this hot so then I can actually see what it looks like with the normal skin and not hot sweaty skin um, but for the most part I kind of like the weird like super defined brow like this is way darker than the boy brow like the pigmentation of it and it's a lighter shade so take my clippies out I'm going to refresh my hair because it's been in a clip for a while. And that's just to kind of take that kink out of it from being in a clip. gosh I look a lot like my mother oh that's kind of cool though she she had some crazy eye, uh, eyebrows um back in the day so this is so weird oh my gosh I don't know how I feel about that I'm actually like really excited about that part and my highlighter is actually not too bad I don't know now that my hair is down like it's all kind of matching but I should put on a lip so let me see, what do I already have with me? I have a whole bunch of lip stuff in my cabinet, but this might be too much. Let me get a neutral, hold on. Okay, since I'm already super glistening, I figured I'd go with a gloss, and I have um, Baby Brown, and this is also by Mented. I have almost all of their lip glosses except for like this cranberry one, and I think they have a red one too, but um, a lot of stuff I have from them, and so I'll just put this on, because it's not like super dark, I want to say, I might have mixed it with something else, the tip is a little bit pink, so I probably added this on top of like a pink a lipstick I have. But for the most part, I think it's cute. And I usually don't use a liner unless I'm gonna wear like a lipstick that I know is gonna bleed a lot. So I just use a, like a gloss or a, a, just a plain old lipstick, nothing fancy. So. This is the finished look, you know, kind of, my eyebrows are just really popping, so I'm hoping that takes away from the weirdness going on on my nose and the separation on my chin. 
I'm going to try to fix it really quick and go out, but I'll see you guys at the next part of the video where I provided the timestamp at the beginning of the introduction to let you know when I'm going to talk about yarn. So if you watch the full first half and you're just here for beauty, I would say try to say if you want. I can't give you a 100% great review at this moment because I am a sweaty person and a lot of the products I am wearing are doesn't seem like they're working with me right now, but we'll see in a little bit how it's going. But like I mentioned, there's some separation here. I don't know if that's from the products that I'm using now or if that's just because I'm really hot and sweaty, which could very well be. So I'll have to try this again on a cooler day and see how it goes. But if you're willing to take a risk, all of the products are super inexpensive. There is an opportunity to get free shipping, I think, if you spend like $25. So there's that, and I mean it's all like a dollar or dollar eighty-eight, depending on if you buy from the campaign. So you're really not losing a lot if you end up not liking it, or you could try to give it to some, a friend um, if you know that they have a similar skin tone. If you're using one of the complexion products, or if you're using like they have eyeshadows and other things and lipsticks and stuff too, if you want to try that. Um, but so far, the brushes are nice if you're just actually doing a swipey instead of a stippling thing. It might just be that type of brush. There was another one I wanted to try, so I'm not sure if all the toppers are the same, like the brush heads are the same, or if it's just the quality of Miss A in general. Um, the Mochi blender is really nice and soft, like super soft. I haven't tried a beauty blender before, but I use a lot of different blending sponges. I have the BH Cosmetics one, I have the Equal Chills one, and I have one that I've used from Ulta, and this was by far the softest of those. Um, I haven't tried the, I haven't tried the Paw Paw yet, but right now it's pretty squishy just in the package, so I imagine once I get it wet it's going to be really nice on the skin. Um, I like the Go Brow better than I like the boy brow, but I like this dark color even though I'm only using the, uh, it doesn't tell me what color it is, but I did pick brown, dark brown, but it's coming up like blackish, um, but my hair is dark brown, so it's kind of close, um, but they have a bunch of different shades, and the highlighter I think would be better if it wasn't dried out and the cap was actually sat on it, on top, it, like, I keep spinning it, but it's not it's like it's on, but it's just kind of turning, 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 and it's not like going to be able to let me use the dropper because it's kind of dry at this point and not liquidy. Um, but it's, a dollar, it's like a dollar fifty-five, I think. Um, but you get just a little teeny bit. But if you're like me and you don't use a lot of highlighter anyway, this is practically perfect for you. Um, the mascara, as I said, this is where the product is, and this is the brush part. Like, look at how much handle you have. Now, this is good for control if you really need to hold it, but the fibers themselves, um, they don't stick up that much, so it's actually harder to grab the smaller lashes than I would think. And the product is like so-so. So I think I might try this with like my Urban Decay one that I did on top where I got like a really full lash. Um, and then try it with the little brush on the lower lash line. I mean, I don't really like a lot of crazy pop on my lower lash um, as far as mascara goes because then it looks like too spidery for me but I always even when I was a kid I'd always just do mascara on the top um, lash only but just having a little something on the bottom one's fine without just going with a liner um, to, to bring that definition I think is a nice kind of in between so if you're like that and you want to try it or you want to use it with a different product at least you just have a dollars worth of brush that you can use to, with any other product you like. Um, the finishing powders, uh, the shades I got were a little bit too dark for me. Um, I don't know if they're not mixing well or if it's just a combination of the humidity, my sweat, and all my other products I have that are like making it do this weird separation thing. But I think I'll just try the setting powder mixed with something else and see how I like it. But this is just a first impression at this point. I haven't worn it that long, but I can already tell it's not going to hold up with the combination of products I have used. Um, the finishing powders seem fine. Again, a little bit dark for me. Um, you wouldn't really think so in the pan, but 
maybe a shade lighter, maybe a mix if you're not quite my skin tone and I lean more toward a golden neutral with a little bit of uh, reddish hyperpigmentation around my mouth area that I usually color correct for. But yep, I can, I'm seeing right now like that part's bugging me and the part around my nose is bugging me. So the eyeshadow that I, I got in the Ipsy bag was nice. I like it. It's doing what it does with anybody's hooded eye, even with um, a primer, it's creasing. Um, but it's a really pretty color. Um, if you do subscribe to Ipsy, let me know how you felt about this color in the July subscription. The Color Club Polish is okay. It, it's a pretty color, but it's not holding up as well as I would have liked, considering I haven't even had it on for 24 hours yet, and I already had chipped it, just trying to get the label or like the packaging off of one of the products. So we'll see if they even last past this video. I might just change my color again tomorrow night. Who knows, but it is really pretty. I already have a color kind of like it from Zoya, but again, I mentioned in another video that I kind of am leaning away from Zoya products now and trying other ones. And right now this one isn't gonna cut it. Might be good for like a toner polish because the if you're like me, your toenail polish lasts like almost 300 years longer than your nail polish application does, so it might be good for that. But that's what I gotta say. Um, I'm gonna head out and I will touch base on the second part of this video where I go over what I bought from Nitpicks and what I got at the yarn store, and we'll see you then. All right. Hey guys, all right, so you made it past the video a uh, portion where I am reviewing or at least applying my makeup. Here it is going on 5.30 and I'm back from my errand running. I got my yarn. I'm going to do my unboxing, but I just wanted to check in before I sit back and start unboxing everything, but to show you what my face looks like. So if you're watching the beauty portion, here is just a little bit of what I look like now and then I'm going to get right into the knitting. But let me scoop. So you'll see I'm very shiny. I didn't do any touch up. Um, I did reapply my lip gloss because I did eat, as I said, um, I was going to do, but you'll see, um, you can't really see it too much in the camera, but it is transferring. Like, I look like an oil slick, so the setting powder and the finishing powder, setting spray, even though the setting spray is pretty good, the finishing powder and the setting powder did not help me out with my foundation application, so I have... Um, some transfer, and you can kind of see, let's see if I close my eye and turn into the sun. Gently closing my eyes, I can see there's some creasing from the eyeshadow. That could just be my primer, the fact that I have hooded lids that are generally oily. Anyway, there's probably some of that, but my eyebrows are still looking good. Um, but there is definitely some breakup around my nose and the funky area and my chin where I did try to like lightly pat in some more foundation there to fix it up before I went out after I was filming and it just it's just all breaking up so as soon as I'm done with this I'm just taking the whole thing off I want to say that I really like the foundation I use I usually have a good time with my eyeshadow base so maybe it's the fact that it's really hot out. I didn't do a primer for, like, for my face this time because I wasn't going to be out that long. Um, so there's a combination of different things. So I would say if you're still going to do Miss A, give it a try. These products aren't super expensive. So if you end up not liking it, it's not the end of the world. But for me, I don't know if I'll buy any more. But I'm definitely going to try again with the products I have maybe in a cooler climate and see if that does help with how my makeup wears because it seems like it's worth I mean if they're gonna keep selling them for so cheap they must be doing something right if they haven't really raised their prices or improved their products and maybe they have since changed formulas um, since the beginning of them starting the business I don't know but I would say I'm not 100% mad at it based on a lot of factors that have um, contributed to how my makeup probably looks. So I'm going to pause the video, sit back, and then get to the yarn haul portion of the video. Okay, I'm a little more comfortable now, and 
I want to show you what I was able to get from the nitpick sale. They were having a sale on their tools um, a week or well a couple weeks ago and it was like maybe a couple weeks worth of sale time before the sale ended. The kit, um, the pattern books that I have here were not part of the sale because I missed the, the, the deadline. The pattern book sale was separate than the uh, tools sale. so. I kind of missed that, but they were still cheaper books. Or, I'm sorry, it wasn't the, the books were sale. It was if you spent um, $25, you would get a free book, and I missed that one. The books are still on sale, I think 40% off, which is still good. So I wasn't too sad about that. So here is the box I got from Knit Picks. It's bigger than the, probably what's inside, but, you know, packaging. And aha, I have my scissors here, so we'll get right into it. Okay. So, as I suspected, there's... Oh, that's not stuffing. All right, let's just open the... What's the first thing I grabbed? It was some yarn. All right, so I got the Knit Picks Palette Yarn, and the color is brown sugar. I'll hold it up in the light a little bit. It's like this really nice, rich, kind of like orangey tinge brown, and it is fingering weight, and it's 100% Peruvian. Peruvian Highland wool, and I'm touching it. I would rub it on my face, but mm, that's not gonna work. Um, it feels nice. It's not, I don't know. It's like, I wanna say it's rough, like scratchy, but it's not. It kind of feels like the, uh, the sport Cascade yarn, um, the Cascade 220 that I'm using for, or that I did use for the stockinette cap that I knit, it kind of feels like that. Um, but I chose fingering weight because I plan to knit a lot more socks for a holiday, and of course fingering weight, sock weight, you know, gotta use that for socks. Um, more, some paper for stuff, okay, yeah, so the box is a lot bigger than what came in it. I did mention in one of my other videos that I wanted some sock blockers, so I got these, and this is the large sock blocker. I am going to be netting some men's socks, so I figured I'd go with a large size so I can use that um, for the men's socks that I plan on knitting for the holiday. But next up, I still need medium socks for some of the ladies and for myself, since I'll be knitting my own socks too. And as I complained many times, I did get a tape measure, so it's a nice cute yellow tape measure and it's retractable, so it's good for portability and I can take it with me while I work on my knitting projects on the go. And now I don't need to take my office ruler down to my lunchroom and then hope that I remember to take it out of my knitting bag before I bring it home and it might never make it back to my office, so this is handy. I also bought this knit picker. It's the tiny little tool and it has like this latch right here that I can use. Actually, here, the instructions show it a lot better on how to actually get your snags. And it doesn't happen a lot, but every now and then when I'm knitting, I do sometimes split my yarn or if there's like a snag, maybe my cats decide to play with something while I've stepped away and I have to fix it and sometimes I just kind of pull on it and hope for the best but this tool is really handy for just pulling your snags back into the work so they're not visible anymore and I who doesn't need more stitch markers so I got these metal ring stitch markers they're gold they hopefully won't snag they kind of just look like a loop, like for a keychain that just hasn't been coiled all the way around. But I have the plastic ones that are just a little bit bigger than these, and these will fit better on the most size needles I use, which usually don't go up higher than an eight um, in a circular needle. But you never know. 
but these look like they'll fit. I also got this really cute cat pen because I can attach it to my project bag or my purse or something like that. And it's knit one per two. So, of course, <laughs> couldn't resist that one. Um, what other tools? Looks like it came with um, an interlude postcard, which I... Oh, no, the interlude pattern book I did put in my wish list, so maybe another time I'll purchase the pattern book. But um, I think it's just advertising. Oh, and that says thank you for your order and all that good stuff. Ah, this is the other cat pin I got. Isn't it cute? A little kitty with a yarn ball. This is this spoke to me first, and then I saw the knit, knit one per two, so why not? They were on sale. Um, ooh, my packing slip is stuck in here. Does it list the prices? No, it doesn't say what I actually paid per sale item, but you can see all the stuff I have here. Oh, and I got two pattern books. So, as I mentioned, the Professor Meow shirt, that's actually what's on the cover right here, but this is the Nine Lives um, pattern book by Knit Picks, and you can see on the back, it has like some cute um, displays of some of the patterns that you can knit. I really like this coffee cup cozy. Um, but as a cat lady, as a cat lover, cat enthusiast, aha, so there's there's that um, Professor Meow shirt. Again, this will definitely be after the holidays, but oh, oh my gosh, the stuff in here is so cute. So I can't wait to share with you guys what I knit out of this pattern book but it'll be after I'm done with the holiday things. And I got another cat thing. <laughs> well, it, it cat related anyway. It's this one here, the Cute and Cozy Little Knits. 35, ooh, oh my pillow just decided to take a nosedive off the cat couch. Um, 35 quick and quirky projects you'll love to make. And of course it had cats on the cover and I said, oh, why not? Oh, these are really cute. Okay, some of the stuff on the back. I like that pillow. That's really cute. I would totally do that. And I will, once I get done with my holiday stuff. Um, so if you're new and you've only watched me because of the beauty stuff I did earlier, this is a knitting channel mainly, and I am pushing myself mostly to finish my holiday knitting for this season. And right now, I bought some things to kind of add to that, some tools that I had needed for a bit, and pattern books. So I already have a few that um, were given to me, but as with any collector, uh, having some variety is pretty nice. So that concludes everything I got. Double check here. Yep, that concludes everything I got from Knit Picks. Now, I went to a local yarn shop and unfortunately I just found out about them last weekend and my friend who had gifted me a lot of yarn and pattern books had let me know that they're going out of business. They've been open for nine years and um, the owner's just kind of moving on to other things and so today and yesterday they had a sale 50% off all yarn and 30% off notions and uh, project bags and all sorts of stuff. So I decided to go today because my um, my Shop Miss A package came in a couple days ago so I, and my Knit Picks package came in earlier this week so it's I figured why not do everything on Saturday and then show you what else I could find from this yarn shop. So because it is one of many in the area, well not really in my area, but in my state, I'm not going to give you the name of it, but I will say that I'm going to go back as soon as next month rolls around. I have some time off planned and there's um, some other stuff going on in my area that I want to attend and it's yarn related, so I figured I would take one more trip over there before they close, which they plan to. Um, very soon and also take a trip to the other stuff and then maybe show you what I got all together there. 
but for today, I'll show you what I picked up at that store during their sale. So, I got this um, Knit Faster with the Amazing Addy Turbo. I'm sure that's not the whole name, but it is the Addy Turbo. I got the 12 inch um, cord length of the US size one. I figure I don't do a lot of lace knitting, but these would make for good socks, I think, um, at some point if I use like it's super, super tiny. Um, they're just kind of fun to play around with, and they originally $13.50, but they were 30% off, so I saved a little bit. And I don't have any Addy products, so I thought, why not give them a try? I also got another tape measure, another retractable tape measure. And this one's really cute because it looks like a macaron, right? Isn't that neat? So now I have a yellow one and, and a cute little pink one. And they're bright, so they'll be easy to find at the bottom of my project bag and also half off. And it's in inches and centimeters, which is great because um, like my doggy sweater that I'm knitting, the it's easier to use the centimeter conversion to get the exact measurement than like point something something like decimal points of an inch when measuring because it's um, British, so they are using metric system. But if I want inches or centimeters, I have this one here, and it has a nice weight to it as well. I also, of course, I got yarn. Um, this is the Grinning Gargoyle yarn. Sock weight color is sea, sea glass. Very, very, very pretty. Um, it's showing up, I guess in the light, it's closer to the color that it is in person. But it's definitely like a tealy kind of blue color. Originally, this um, price was $25 for this hank, but half off. So I made pretty good, pretty good, a uh, pretty good deal there. And it looks like they have um, a shop, Etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash grinning gargoyle. So it looks like they might, you might be able to purchase their products on their Etsy shop. Have the yarn here in person from the Y L L Y S local yarn shop. Yes. What else? Okay, so this is Mia Bella yarn, um, and you can go to their website to get more. And it's this beautiful hand dyed yarn, just a very pretty like browny, um, taupey kind of color. And this was $33.50 uh, for the original price, half off. And it's um, silk and cashmere. Oh, no, no, no. It's 70% BFL SW, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere. And it's 438 yards but very, very nice to the touch. Hand dyed, of course, so you got good quality. Let me see what the gargoyle one was. Um, oh, this is merino and silk, 50-50. It's very, very nice and soft. What else? Oh, <laughs> they were selling, um, so this tube used to be full of buttons, but because of, because they're going out of business, they're not restocking anything, and, um, so a button is 50 cents, but I got it for um, a quarter. And it's this cute little flower. And I thought instead of um, instead of knitting a big button on the tam that I'm working on, this flower just called to me. And I said, what a cute little accent on that tam for my cousin's daughter to have a little flower that's like kind of the same color, but just a little pop. Just a little something. It doesn't have to be crazy big. And the the button that I was going to use is like a navy blue, so I felt like this kind of goes with it better. Um, so because they just had the tube um, with the button as the uh, display, I just bought the display button. So I have this tube. Don't know what I'm going to do with this tube. 
I should just recycle it, but I'm compelled to keep this tube for some reason. I don't know. I like keeping weird containers and stuff like that. It's like the little bit of hoarder in me is to keep like weird, weird stuff like this. And I kind of like this too. It's not even fancy or anything, but I like it. And speaking of buttons, they put some more that I picked out that still had like more in the tube. And this, I bought singles and they look different. So I got, I got this one. It's a, uh, it's plastic. But it's like this cool little shape. Let me hold it in some background that's a little bit um, contrast to it. But it's a cute shape. I thought it'd be really cute for like a shawl. If I ever knit one for myself or make another one for somebody that has like a spot just for a button. Um, I could probably make a plain one and make a button hole for it. But right now I have this cool little button. And I thought the same thing. When I saw this gray one, um, I'll hold it up to the light a little bit, but uh, can you see? Okay, oh, perfect. Okay, so it's catching the light just enough that you can see it has like these ridge designs on it. So this is raised across here. So it has a little bit of texture. It's very interesting. I haven't seen a button like that before. So I was like super bummed that this place is going out of business because it's not far from me. And why not spend a day, you know, I mean, given that everything was discounted, I was more affordable for me. But if I really had my head set on a project and I knew like the color scheme I wanted, I knew the yarn weight I wanted, I had a pattern in mind and I went in there with an agenda, I could find a lot of really cool stuff there. And it's just a bummer that, you know, she is trying to make something and, you know, support herself and this business just didn't go as well as maybe she had hoped. I didn't get all the story, but being open nine years is a pretty good amount of time for a small business, but being such a special specialty shop, I was kind of surprised because I know so many knitters. Um, well, not so many, but I know of knitters, and there were quite a few ladies in there when I went in, and they were like regular customers talking with the staff, and you know they knew my first name, and I was just like, Wow, it's kind of sad, but at least while I know it's still open, I have an opportunity to visit there one more time and get some more things, but I just kind of knew what I wanted, but I didn't really know what to expect inside, so it was another overwhelming experience, but I'm glad I got to walk out with a few of these cool finds that, you know, I might not see ever again in person. And I got another one of Mela Be Mel Mia, Mia Bella. Um, this is another hand dyed yarn. Very pretty. It's like um, another like purpley, taupey brown kind of color. And it's so these colors look to be similar, um, but this one is definitely like a little bit darker than this one. Um, I don't know if these are going to be socks for me or for friends or family. Well, probably more like family. Maybe a friend? I don't know. But they're squishy yarn. Very fun to feel. So I imagine they're going to be amazing on my feet. And I know you can do other things with sock yarn besides knit socks, but that is the easiest thing I can think of doing the quickest with this tiny, tiny, thin yarn um, is to knit socks with sock weight yarn. Like, you can make shawls and things like that, but for right now, I don't think I'm going to wreck my brain over what to knit with these besides socks. I went in, buy sock yarn, and knit socks. And so that was everything I bought from the yarn store that was going out of business. So let me say, so the... Oh, it doesn't tell me the difference, but I saved a lot. Okay, so I saved $71.89 from my shopping trip. All sales final. I don't think I'm going to have any complaints. This is hand-dyed stuff. I'm going to be super, super, super um, uh, vigilant when I cut 
that scrap yarn to do my winding because I don't want to have another weird episode of when I cut the um, the other yarn that is like the yellow one that I'm knitting with the Raylite socks, which I'm almost done. I'm almost done with my last sock of that. Um, but for the most part, that is my haul from Knit Picks and from the store that's going out of business. And if you have watched this from the very beginning to the very end, thank you so much. If you were just here for the beauty portion and you found yourself watching this part, I hope you like my channel and continue to watch other content if you want to get into knitting and have a project that you're working on yourself. And if you're part of my regular group of folks who watch my videos and happen to sit through the first part where you saw me do whatever it is I do to this face and all of the weird stuff that was going on with there. Um, thank you so much for watching that portion as well. As I mentioned in my previous video, I'm not going to show you the um, Tempestry project until I've gotten a little bit further in it. It wasn't at a point where I felt comfortable showing my progress because I really didn't do much with it from the video I filmed. So I've made some more progress and I'll be working on that tonight and through the rest of the week. So by next weekend we should be showing you that and you can see how far I've come. But I'm almost in the 100 row area now so I think that's pretty good. So as I said, thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.